Okay, here we are with section 9.2, and this is starting with the law of signs. So in this section, we're gonna now start talking about triangles that are not right triangles. So of course, not all triangles are right triangles. Triangles that are not right triangles are called oblique triangles. And these triangles can either have all angles acute or two angles acute and one obtuse. What is acute and obtuse? Acute means um, the angles are less than 90 degrees and obtuse means that the angle is greater than 90 degrees, okay? But you can't have two angles that are greater than 90 degrees because remember, all the angles of a triangle have to equal 180 only. So if you have two angles that are greater than 90, then that sum is going to be more than 180, which means it's not a triangle. It's some other kind of shape. Okay, so we have four cases of these kinds of triangles, oblique triangles, okay? One case is where you have one side and two angles known or given. Okay. Um, and they label them um, angle, side, angle, or side, angle, angle, depending on where the given information is. And we'll talk about that in just um, later in the section. Okay. Case two is when two sides and the angle, oh, where's my eraser? There it is. opposite one of them is known or are known slash given okay so when you have two sides and the angle opposite of one of them that's called side side angle and these two cases are in bold because these are the two cases that we're going to cover in section 9.2 um i believe we may cover all of them but i believe not nope the other two cases are going to be in section 9.3 and i'll describe them here but we're not going to do problems with these two cases yet so case three is when you have two sides and the included angle are known um, slash given. So side, the angle in between, side, right? Or when three sides and no angles are known slash given. And that's called side, side, side. So they gave you three bits of information. Okay, <clears throat> so the law of sines theorem tells us that for a triangle, we've kind of already mentioned before that the angles and the lengths of the sides are proportionate, right? I've said that in the last um, section and we had to verify that our measurement seemed quote unquote reasonable because we wanted to make sure that they fit that description where the the smallest angle would give the opposite smallest or shortest side and then the largest angle would have the opposite side with the longest length right um and we had to keep that because of those ratios well here they're going to explain to us what that ratio is okay so the ratio of sine of your angle over the measurement of your angle. These two things have a specific ratio. And whatever that ratio is, 
it's gonna be the same ratio for all the other sides. So these numbers might be different, but the ratio is gonna be the same as that one. And so basically what it's saying is that it doesn't matter whether you have like a little itty bitty triangle like this with these particular angles, or you have a giant one like this. If the angles are still all the same, then those links are still going to be proportionate to those angles, okay? This might have a proportion of two, whereas this one might have a proportion of five, right? Um, so they are going to be proportionate. Now, um, we also know that in order to solve triangles, we use the fact that the sum of the angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. We already know that, okay? So let's look at this exploration that they have here. It says, consider the following triangle with an altitude H constructed from one of the vertices of the triangle. So they have this triangle that is not a right triangle. And notice you have angle capital A across from side little a, angle capital B across from side little b, and angle capital C across from side little c. Remember that naming convention that we talked about in section one. So you've got to be consistent with these labelings, okay? Now what they've done is they've taken B and they've just like cut it in half. Now this side might not be exactly the same as that side. It may not be. It may be that this one's a little bit shorter and this one's a little bit longer, right? That's not what we're worried about. We're not given any values whatsoever, so we're not to determine which side is smaller or bigger or any of that, okay? Um, but what they want us to do is they want us to say, um, use the rules for right triangles to form from previous sections to complete the ratios. So I gotta use H, okay? So if I have angle A, I need to use, this is a right triangle as well, I need to use this triangle to talk about the sine of angle A. It should be opposite over hypotenuse. So we have opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, I'm sorry, hypotenuse is C. Because I am looking at this triangle, the gray one, okay? And that gray one is opposite over the hypotenuse of that gray triangle. Now for sine of C, I've got to look at the white triangle, the empty one, the one that's not filled in gray, okay? Here, we've got to use H again. So we're going to say um, this, and you can't use this length because you don't know what this length is. I couldn't use this side because I don't know what that side is. Remember I said this side could be shorter, this one could be longer, or vice versa. So you can't use that side. So we have to use H and A. And this is also opposite and adjacent. So opposite and adjacent. And it says solve each ratio for H. So here I'm gonna multiply by C. I get little c times sine of capital A equals H. Here I'm gonna multiply by A. I get A equals sine of capital C equal to H. And then it's saying, um, and now if each value, of h equals to the other and you manipulate to get this so if i set these two things equal to each other we get c sine of a equal to a sine of c and if i divide this side by a and little c and i divide this side by a and little c the c's will cancel and i'll get sine of a over a and here the A's will cancel and I'll get sine of C over little c, okay? And that's all it's saying, is that if you set them equal to each other and you manipulate the equation, you get this relationship, which is where the law of sines comes from, okay? Now you could, you know, cut it this way and establish the law of sines between B and C. You could cut it this way and establish the law of sines between A and B. Um, but essentially, what you're going to end up with is this relationship altogether. Okay, so let's look at exploration three. So in exploration three, 
It says, consider the following triangle with an altitude H. So notice that it's not an acute one. We have, um, or it is an acute, acute angle, but since it's not a right triangle, and all we know how to work with is right triangles, right? Um, since it's not a right triangle, we are extending this out to make it look like a right triangle. Now this angle here, remember, in order for you to make a flat line, it's gotta be 180 degrees. So that 180 degrees is the whole way around. So then this part would be the 180 minus this angle, which is A. So this little angle right here is 180 degrees minus A. B is this length right here. That's what B is, because it's a lowercase, right? Lowercase for sides, capitals for angles, okay? Now this is opposite of capital C, so that's little c, opposite of capital B is little a, I'm a little b, and uh, opposite of capital A is little a. Now it says, um, this creates a right triangle. From the difference formula for the sine function, it can be shown that sine of, and we have to remember our difference formulas, okay? And the difference formula for sine is going to be sine cosine, cosine, sine. And so then the sine of 180 is zero. So zero, no matter what this is, zero times that weird number, whatever it is, is still gonna be zero. And then you have the minus that has come down and the cosine of 180 degrees is negative one, but I don't know what sine of A is, so it just stays there. And then the negative and the negative become positive, so you just end up with the sine of A. So what they're saying is, is that the sine of this angle is the same as the sine of A, okay? Like exploration one, use the rules for the right triangles to, from previous sections to complete the ratios sine of A. So then what we end up with is, um, if we're looking at this, um, tri right triangle right here, we know that the sine of the sine of 180 degrees minus A is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. I'm sorry, over hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that means we know that this equals sine of A according to part one. We also know what this is. It's opposite, which is H, over hypotenuse, which is C, okay? And so then if I manipulate this, I end up with um, C sine of A equal to H. Dun, dun, dun. And then if you do sine of C, if I look at the big, um, the big one, not this little one, but the big triangle like this, if I take sine of capital C, that's going to be the opposite, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which happens to be, this is the side across from the angle, A. So then I figure out that A sine of C equals H. So here we do, this is the obtuse angle. So it does have an obtuse angle. So the other one was an acute triangle where all the angles were less than 100 and less than 90 degrees. And here we have one angle that is greater than, than um, 90 degrees. And notice we get that same situation, right? If I set this H value equal to that H value, we get C sine of A equal to A sine of C. If I divide both sides by A and C again, I get sine of A over A equal to sine of capital C over C, just like we did before, okay? So it says note that this is the same result as you found in expiration two for the same ratio. So whether the triangle has three acute angles or has two acute angles and one obtuse angles, the same result holds and proves the law of sines. So it does not matter what kind of triangle you have, 
the law of signs will apply as long as you have enough information to use it, okay? And so that's why they broke it up into two, ca two cases for law of signs and two cases for another law called law of cosines in the next section. Because the first two cases, we do have enough information to apply the law of signs. The last two cases, we don't have enough information to apply the law of signs, okay? And what kind of information do you need to apply the law of signs? I'll tell you. You have three bits of information that are gonna be given to you. In order for you to apply the law of signs, you have to be given an angle and the side opposite of that angle. And then the third information doesn't matter because you could use the ratio for that one to figure out the unknown. So as long as I'm given the side and the angle that's across from it, I can use this other angle to find its corresponding side. If I'm given an angle on the side and another angle, again, I can do the same thing, okay? So, and if I'm given this situation where I had given, where is it up right here? A side and the angle. I can use these two to figure out the other angle. And then also this situation where you're given a side and an angle and you can use the information to figure out the other side, okay? And that's the same thing all over. Okay, so however, there are some weird things that can happen. And I don't think they're gonna talk about that just yet in this first example. Um, I think they give us two examples just to warm us up to the problems. And then they're gonna hit us hard with um, some funny business, okay? So notice here they did not draw the triangle for me. All they said is solve the triangle where A is equal to 20 degrees, B is equal to 80 degrees, and A is equal to four degrees. Now your triangle may look different from my triangle. However, it should be labeled the exact same, okay? So if I draw a picture and I just draw some random triangle, I have no idea what the angles are, so I don't know that these angles are accurate as I'm drawing them. I'm just drawing the triangle big enough so that I can label it everywhere and scribble all over it if I need to, okay? I like to label A, B, and C. My friend may want to label this A, this B, and this C. And his friend may want to label it A, B, and C. It does not matter, okay? What matters is you stay consistent. If you label this capital A, then across from it needs to be side little a. If you label that one capital B, across from it needs to be little b, and across from this capital C needs to be little c. That's what's important. How you rotate this around or flip it over, doesn't matter, okay? Now, I'm gonna label. So this one I know is 20 degrees. This one I know is 80 degrees. And A I know is four. Now I can figure out the angle really quickly because I am given two of them and I know that the whole thing should add up, add up to equal 180. Um, so I know that 20 degrees plus 80 degrees plus the angle C should equal 180 degrees, which means that C is actually, I don't know why I needed the calculator to tell me that, but it's 80 degrees, okay? Now it does say, begin drawing the picture to see what this is a, is it a side angle angle or is it an angle side angle? Now notice if I start around, right? Notice that here I have an angle, an angle and a side, right? So if you switch the rotation and you start here, it's side, angle, angle, okay? And so the scenario I have is side, angle, angle. In order for it to be this side, 
In this situation, I would have had to have angle, then side, then angle, okay? And I don't have that situation happening. So this one is a side angle angle scenario. Side here, keep going, angle and angle. Now let's go ahead and use this information to figure out the remaining sides, C and B, okay? You have to use one angle that has the opposite side already given. So I have to use this bits of information. So I need to use that sine of 20 degrees over four, that ratio should be the same as the ratio of all the others, right? So you choose which one you wanna find first um, because I already know now that this is 80 degrees. So you choose whether you wanna find B first or you choose whether you wanna find C first, it makes no difference, okay? It doesn't. You can do it however you want to do it, okay? But, and it really doesn't make a difference because notice how we have the same angle, which means guess what? That side is gonna be the same as this side. So really, it doesn't even matter which one you do because immediately the other one's gonna be the exact same thing, okay? So we're gonna say sine of 80 degrees over, we'll go in alphabetical order, over B. And so then in order for me to solve this, I'm gonna cross multiply, which means I get B sine of 20 degrees equal to four sine of 80 degrees. And then if I divide both sides by sine of 20 degrees, I get four sine of 80 degrees over sine of 20 degrees. Now, just FYI, that's a lot of writing to do. I don't need to write this step, me personally, okay? If you have to write that step to be able to solve for B, by all means, do it, okay? I'd rather you do what makes sense to you than try to use my shortcuts and not understand how I'm doing them or why I'm doing them, okay? But for me, if I see that my variable is here, this is the, what I do. I circle my variable and then I do my cross multiplication but I'm gonna multiply those and then I'm gonna divide by the other guy. I'm not gonna divide by this one because that's the one that I'm trying to solve for, okay? I notice that that's exactly what I get. Four times sine of 80 degrees over sine of 20 degrees. So I typically don't write this step. From now on, I will not write it. As soon as I set up the ratios, I'm gonna do the cross, cross multiply and divide technique to solve for my variable. And so you'll see me do this gesture a lot when I'm trying to solve for my variables, okay? So this I can type in the calculator. I get four sine of 80 degrees over sine of 20 degrees. And I get that the answer, it doesn't tell me how to round it. So I'm gonna round it to two decimal places. So 11.52. And that's what I get for side B. This is B. Okay, now remember, the angles and the sides are proportionate to one another. So if this angle is 80 and it gives me 11.52, then guess what? When this angle is 80, it's gonna give me the exact same thing. It's the same ratio just with the letter C here. So when I do the cross and divide, it's just C is gonna equal this. And so C also equals this 11.52. And so I don't need to solve any further or go any further than that, okay? Now, typically what I would have done to get C is I would have had two options. I would have used the sine of this over C equal to this ratio for A, or I could have done the Pythagorean theorem with four and 11.52 to figure out C. There are other methods to find that last side. There are multiple ways to find that last side, okay? So that's example one. And it's important that you understand that there's multiple ways to do it because I may do it one way on the solutions, but you may have done it a different way and got the same thing. If you did it a different way and you didn't get the same thing as I did, then you did something wrong, okay? But when I grade these tests, I don't grade this chapter 
as in, did you do exactly what I did? Because I know there's a lot of freedom and choice with these particular problems. So you may not have done exactly what I did or even in the order that I did them in, okay? That is gonna be your liberty to take. You just have to make sure that you're following all of the steps, following the theorems, following the rules, following the properties of mathematics, and you will get there, okay? Just the same as I do. So let's go ahead and look at example two. So a lot of times I always get the comments on my evaluations. Well, I was marked wrong because I didn't do it the way she did it. And that's not true. I will give you credit if you did it a way different for me, but you still end up with the same answer. If you did not get credit for that problem, it's not because you did it differently than me. It's because you did it wrong. You did it incorrectly. And that's why you got points taken away, okay? So I just want to establish that now because I am not one of those instructors that if you don't do it my way, exactly the way that I do it, it's wrong. There are lots of different ways to solve things and to find things in mathematics. I mean, that's the beauty of it, that minds think differently and you can get to the same place going, to going through different avenues, okay? And I'm not gonna take that away from mathematics. So just because you do it differently does not mean you're gonna get deducted points on a test, okay? As long as what you're doing differently is correct, you should earn the exact same points as you would have if you had done exactly what I did, okay? But because of that liberty and because of the different ways you can possibly do things, um, when I give you the answer key, you know, because after I give you the test, I'm going to give you the answer key, the way I do it may not be the exact same way that you had done it, okay? And I, I can't possibly, I mean, I guess I could, but it would take me forever to sit there and work out every single one problem, all the six or seven to eight different ways that you could work it out. That's going to be a really, really long solutions manual, like ridiculously long, and it's very time consuming, very. It already takes me like 45 minutes to an hour just to create one of them. Um, so I couldn't imagine trying to spend like a whole half a week's worth of time <laughs> coming up with the solutions to one test, right? So I'm just, that's not gonna happen. It's not feasible. So we're gonna go ahead and continue. And again, how I do the problem may not be what your brain wanted to do automatically but we'll see um, how it gets us, okay? So, um, let's go ahead and get started on this one. So let's see, um, it says solve the triangle where B equals 25 degrees, C equals 85 degrees, and A equals six degrees. So I'm going to draw the picture. And again, I don't care what the angles are. I just draw the same picture. I'll find the numbers. Um, I just draw the, all the pictures the same so that I have enough space to write and everything. If I draw with a really, really tiny angle, like 25 degrees, I won't be able to squish everything in that little tiny angle. So I just always draw this. It's like an equilateral where everything's the same, although I'm not going to get all the same. Okay. So here, we're going to say that I was not given A, but I was given B is 25 degrees. And I was given that C is 85 degrees. And so I'm given A, which is this side, is 6 degrees. This one would be B, and this one would be little c. I'm going to try to indicate my capitals from my lowercase. So I'm going to put these little lines on my capitals. So that way you can tell the difference between my big C and my little c. Um, it says, begin by drawing a picture to see that this is a blank scenario. So let's see, I've got, if I go around, I've got angle, angle, side, or side, let me see, side, side, angle, angle. Yeah, looks like I have this one. Do I have angle, side, angle? Actually, that makes more sense because they're right next to each other, right? looks like I have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So we're going to say angle, side, angle. And the other one, let me just point out real quick, they have to be close to each other. Um, 
And so these were close to each other, right? So it was side, angle, angle. It just happened to be the other angle was not so close. Now, let's see. We want to solve it. So we have to use one angle that has the opposite side given. So I would have to take the A's again. Unfortunately, I don't know what the angle is right now, but the angles are really easy to find when you're already given two. So I know that um, angle A plus angle B plus angle C should equal 180 degrees, which means that A should equal, and I would recommend you just do it in the calculator because I can't tell you how many times I've done it in my head and came up with the wrong answer. Like I was off by like 10 degrees. Um, I don't know if it's just the fact that the more algebra and trig and calculus you learn, the less arithmetic you seem to bother to memorize. Um, but my brain is concentrating on the more complex ideas that the arithmetic my brain just farts on and I can't seem to get this, the correct numbers. So I just always type it in my calculator by default just to make sure that everything is good before I start going on with the wrong value, okay? So we do have to use this relationship. So now I know that this one is 70. So I'm gonna use the fact that sine of 70 degrees over A, oh, I know what A is, A is six, right? So I know that it's six, and then I'm gonna try to figure out Hmm, let's see, maybe we go with B, right? Go alphabetically order. So I'm gonna say the sine of capital B, which is 25 degrees over little b, and then might as well do the other one. So sine of C, which is 85 degrees over little c. So only take two at a time in order to solve the equation. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two And then I'm gonna take these two over here. And why am I taking the first one in this one and not this one in this one? Because this has all of the given information. And if you can use the given information, that is the best way to go to avoid making multiple errors, okay? So here I'm gonna get B equal to six sine of 25 degrees over this leftover guy, sine of 70 degrees. Here I'm gonna get C equal to cross six sine of 85 degrees over the leftover guy, sine of 70 degrees, okay? And so then I'm gonna type that in my calculator, type this one in my calculator and we'll see what we get. So six sine of 25 over sine of 70, we get two point, we'll just say seven because that's gonna make this go to 10, which is gonna make that go to seven. Then over here, um, we'll do the same thing, but this is now an 85. So six sine of 85 over sine of 70, we get 6.36, okay. So now we have everything. We have B, we have C, and we have the angle A. We have all the three measurements that we were missing, okay? So now it talks here. It says to solve the side-side angle, okay? Side, side, angle. And if you need to refer to the beginning of this section to decide which one it is, refer to the cases to decide which one it is, right? So if I look at this previous one, no, not that one. Um, this previous one that we did, right? And I was having a hard time because of the order of this stuff. The order doesn't really matter, okay? That's just the label and that's just the label. What matters is the criteria. So in order for it to be a side angle angle or angle side angle, one side and two angles have to be known, okay? 
And so then to decipher between the two, that's when the order matters, right? Is the side between the two angles, like right in between, like it was in this one, right? Because here's my two angles they gave me and that one was right in between. Or is the angle that I'm given not in between, the side I'm given not in between? And so that's this one, when the side is not in between the two angles given, okay? So then now the last one is a uh, side side angle. So that's when you have two sides and the an angle opposite of one of those is known, okay? So we have two sides and an opposite of one of them is given. The angle opposite of one of them. So I'm gonna draw my triangle again. I draw, oh, what is this called? So case two is called the ambiguous ambiguous case because there are three possible scenarios that can occur. One scenario is that there are two, one, or no triangles that have the measurements that are given. So the easy case, which is like example one and two, would be if there was only one possible solution, right? One possible solution is all we've known so far with example one and two. But now what they're saying is that it's not only possible to get one solution, it may be possible to get two solutions or it may be possible that there is no solution, okay? There's no triangle that exists with the criteria that was given. And so we're lucky because they label it, they're telling us which case we're gonna get, right? They're specifically telling us which case we're going to get. And so that's nice, but I still want you to be able to determine how you would know without it telling you that there's one case or not. Okay. And so what you're going to look for is that um, whenever you find the first angle, one, once you find the first angle, not the one given, of course, one of the unknowns, the first angle, um, also consider 180 degrees minus this angle as another solution, okay? And you will know if it makes sense or not, okay? You'll be able to, and then, okay, then verify all angles sum to equal 180 degrees, okay? That's what we'll be doing. So, dun, dun, dun. let's go ahead and try. So then let's see, if we have a triangle, again, I don't know what the measurements are gonna be. I'm just drawing it kind of big enough so I can label it. So I'm gonna label this A, this B, and this C. So B is 35 degrees, little b, which goes across, is 5. Little a, which goes across capital A, is 3. And then little c is across from capital C, and that is not given. So which pair do we have this time? We have this pair, right? So we know that sine of 35 degrees over b, which is 5. And if I do the same for all the others, so sine of a over three, and I don't know what sine of c is over c. I don't have any information for this one, okay? So I can't use this to solve for anything. So I would have to take these two. And my variable is here. So if I cross multiply and divide, I get that sine of a equals three times sine of 35 degrees over five. 
And then if I try to figure out what the angle A is, it's sine inverse of this value. And so then I get A equals, let's see, sine inverse of 3 sine of 35 degrees over 5. And let me close it. I get that it's about 20.1 degrees. 20.1 degrees. Okay. So this is the first angle that I found. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that is one possibility. A could equal 20.1 degrees. Another possibility is 180 minus this 20.1 degrees, which means another possibility is 159.9 degrees. That is another possibility, okay? So then you have to consider if B is equal to 35 degrees, so there's two different situations here. If B is 35 degrees and A is 20 degrees, that's 20.1 plus 35 degrees plus C equal to 180. That means C would have to equal 180 minus 20.1 minus 35, means C would have to be 124.9 degrees, okay? Now let's go look at, and this is plausible, right? This can happen, it's, there's nothing wrong. C can equal um, an obtuse angle, that's totally okay. Now here, if I do the math, I get that A is 159.9 degrees and B is 35 degrees and I wanna know what C is to get 180 degrees. Well, if I take 180 minus 159.9, minus 35, I get that C would have to be negative 14.9 degrees. Now we are not talking about a unit circle here. We're talking about a triangle. And so you can't have negative degrees in a triangle. So this right here, getting the negative, tells me I am not going to have a second solution. No second solution. Okay, now had I received a positive number over here, then I would have two triangles, okay? So you can anticipate on the next page where it was labeled two triangles that that's exactly what's going to happen, okay? But for here, I wanted you to see what it looks like when there's only one triangle. How would you know there's only one triangle? And that's how you let, you find one of them, you let the second one be 180 minus that. And if that makes your third angle negative, this is not gonna be, this is not happening, okay? It's not possible. Only this one's possible, okay? So, and I'll show you how to tell if it's not possible at all. So, so far I have found A, I have found C, and I know A that was given to me, I know B that was given to me, the only thing that I'm missing is side C. And C I can find with the Pythagorean theorem. No, I can't use Pythagorean theorem. So now that I have angle C, I can use this relationship, um, these two, right? The fraction that has all the information given to me and this one, because now I know what capital C is. The only unknown is little c. So we're gonna say, sine of 35 degrees over five equals sine of 124.9 degrees over little c. So little c equals cross multiply over divided by the leftover one. We get that c equals, let's see, um, five sine of 124.9 over sine of 35 we get that it's about 7.15, and that's that measure. And so then double check, does it make sense? So what I like to do is I like to come back over here and label everything. And then this one is 7.15. So is the smallest angle have the smallest side? Yes. 
Does the largest angle have the largest uh, side? Yes. And so this does make perfect sense and we have solved this triangle um, effectively, okay? Now let's look at what happens when you have no triangle. How would I know that as I'm working through the problem, right? So the first thing we need to do is label our triangle so we can see what we've got. So A, B, C, little a, little b, and little c. Okay, so then angle A is 50 degrees and side B is eight degree or eight, whatever unit that is, it doesn't tell me feet or meters or anything. And A is five, okay? So this is the one where I have the complete information for, okay? So I'm gonna use sine of 50 degrees over five and then set up the other two ratios. So sine of capital B over eight and then sine of capital C over little c. Now I don't have enough information to set this equal to this because there's two unknowns. But here I only have one unknown, which is B. So I'm gonna go with this situation to solve for capital B. So then I get um, cross multiply and divide. So I get sine of B equals eight sine of 50 degrees over five. And then if I solve for B, I'm gonna say sine inverse of eight sine of 50 degrees over five. And when I try to type that in my calculator, look at what the calculator tells me. It tells me domain error. Why does it tell me domain error? I'll tell you why. Because this value right there is bigger than one. Let me just delete that and just type eight sine of 50 degrees over five. Look, it's a number bigger than one. You cannot do sine inverse of a number bigger than one because that's out of the domain of sine inverse, okay? So which means this value um, is undefined. And because that value is undefined, that's what makes the fact that there is no triangle. You couldn't even find a first angle to be able to subtract it from 180 degrees and follow through with the rest of the situation. Couldn't even do that because as soon as you try to find the first angle, you're left at a block, okay? So if you do this and you get domain error or error in your computer, you know that there's no triangle, okay? So that's how you'll know if there's no triangle. You try to do it, calculator tells you error, no triangle. Now let's see what happens when you get two triangles. And what do you do, right? When you get two triangles, you're gonna have two sets of solutions, okay? So I'm gonna try to give myself enough space. So I'm gonna go here. So I could do one here because I know this one's gonna be two. On my paper, I would have like the whole sheet of paper. So I wouldn't have to cut up what space I was given in half. I'd have enough space to do everything. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create my triangle. Again, just the basic one. So A, B, and C, little a, little b, little c. And then they tell me C is 15 degrees. C, little c, is 6, measurement of 6. And A is a measurement of 10. So which one am I given both of the informations for, the, the, the cross information? It would be C, right? So if I set up my law of signs, I have sine of 15 degrees over six equal to, we'll go for A, sine of A over 10 equal to sine of capital B over little b. This one I have two unknowns, so I cannot use that fraction to keep going. I'm gonna have to use these two to solve. So cross multiply and divide, I get sine of A equals 10, sine of 15 degrees over six. So I get that A equals 
sine inverse of 10 sine of 15 degrees over 6. And what does the calculator tell me? It says sine inverse of 10 sine of 15 over 6. And I think I mentioned this in the first video, but these are all degrees. So make sure that you're in degree mode, right? Otherwise, you're going to frustrate yourself and get all the wrong answers. And you're going to be like, I'm doing it right. You are. You just have your calculator in the wrong mode. So be careful. Okay, cool. So I'm going to round that. I'm going to get 25.6. So 25.6 degrees. And the computer will tell you how to round your answers. The computer will specify. This paper doesn't specify, so I'm just rounding it to what I feel I should round it to. Um, but in my math labs, they are very particular. They'll tell you, round your angles to the near to one decimal place, or round your angles to two decimal places, round your sides to one decimal, round your sides to two decimals. They will be very specific in the computer, okay? Um, here they're not, so I'm just rounding it to one decimal place, everything, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, that's A. So that's a possibility for A. Another possibility for A is 180 degrees minus this 25.6, which is 154.4 degrees, which seems large like the other one, but we have no idea what the situation is. So we have to continue to verify whether or not this is going to work. So if this is correct, then we would have 25.6 degrees for A plus who knows what for B equal to 15 degrees for C, and that should all total to equal 180. So then that means B equals 180 minus 25.6 minus 15. So I get that B is 139.4 degrees. It is positive. So this is a possible answer, which means I will get a solution for this situation. All I need to do next is just find out what little b is, and we can do that in a minute. Here, I need to verify whether this is possibly going to give me a second set of solutions. So I'm gonna say, well, if A is this measurement, and B is unknown, and C is 15 degrees, that should total 180 degrees. So then B should equal 180 minus 154.4 minus 15. And I get 10.6 degrees. That's positive, which means that's also plausible. I could have this second situation happening, okay? So essentially the difference here is that in this particular case, it's angle B that is obtuse. And over here in this case, it's angle A that is obtuse. But because of the ratio of the sides, they're not the same values, okay? So let's go ahead and call this one then B1 because it came from A1. And we'll call this one B2 because it came from A2. And they're always going to label it like that. The one that you found from the beginning is always going to be A1, the one you found from doing the law of signs. And then the other one that you got from subtracting it from 180, that's always going to be A2. So if you do in fact have two solutions in MyLabs Plus, you're going to have to know that this answer and this answer is for A1 and B1. And these answers are for A2 and B2. You cannot mix them up, otherwise the computer will just keep telling you you're wrong, even though your work is correct, okay? So remember, the first one you find from the law of signs, directly from the law of signs, is called A1. The one you get by subtracting that response from 180 is A2, okay? You have to keep that straight so you can put the right numbers in the right boxes in my math labs. So now we need to find little b. So we have A, we have B, we already know um, little a, we already know big C and little c. The only thing next we need is little b. So now I'm going to use the one that has the information given and this ratio. So sine of 15 degrees over 6 equal to sine, and I know what the angle b is here, it's 139.4 degrees 
over little b. And I'm going to call it little b1 because it's corresponding to big b1, right? So b1 is going to equal cross multiply and then divide by the extra guy. So B1 equals, let's see, six sine of 139.4 over sine of 15, we get 15.1. And so that's little b1 for this situation, okay? And so look at the three angles. You've got 15 degrees, uh, 25.6 degrees and 139. Let's verify that all this information is plausible. This is the smallest angle and look at the measurements of the sides. It's also the smallest side. This is the largest angle and look at the measures of the sides. It's also got the largest side. So this one is completely plausible solution. <coughs> Excuse me. So now let's go find little b2. So I'm going to take the same ratio, these two guys, over 6. Oops, I'm covering it, but these two guys right here. But now b is not 139.4, b is 10.6. And because this is b2, this is going to be little b2. And so then little b2 is 6 sine of 10.6 over sine of 15 degrees, which means B2 equals, um, I'm gonna go back up here and cheat and just change this big number into 10.6, delete. And I get 4.3. So here we have A is 154.4, B is 10.6, and little b is 4.3, and we already know the values for the c's and little a. So look at the angles. We've got 15, 154, and 10. This one is the smallest angle. Does it have the smallest side? It does, 6, 10, and 4.3. It's got the smallest side. Now between these three angles, a is the biggest angle. And does a have the biggest side? Between 10, 6, 10, and 4.3, yes, A has the bigger side. So this is also a plausible solution, okay? So you've got two sets of solutions here. And so make sure in the computer you're typing them in in the correct boxes, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and move on with um, example six and seven. And then we'll get to the very last two of this section. This is quite a long section, but they're just trying to get everything um, all out there so that you can have it all as resource when you do your homework, okay? So with all of these problems, I don't have any extra problems that I'm gonna need to give you because every single one of these problems is going to help you solve the problems that are in your homework. So for example, six. Yours are gonna have diagrams, which is fantastic. Mine doesn't, so I'm gonna have to draw it myself. And hopefully I don't mess it up like I did in 9.1. So let's see. To measure the height of a mountain, a surveyor takes two sightings of the peak at a distance 900 meters apart on a direct line to the mountain. Okay, the first observation results in an angle of elevation of 47 degrees, whereas the second results in an elevation of 35 degrees. If the transit is two meters high, transit means like how tall the machine is or how tall the person is that's viewing, okay? Um, and since he's a surveyor, it's probably his little gadget that he's got, I don't know what they're called, but it's probably his gadget that is set on a, on a tripod or something that, and that tripod and the gadget together um, makes it at two meters high. What is the height of the mountain? Begin by drawing a figure to represent the situation. So again, I'm gonna try my best. 
So here's my little mountain. I'm not very good, but there's my mountain. There's my little peak, right? And so this is the peak. This is what he's viewing, right? And you have to be careful because this is the ground. And what you have here is you have this machine here. And then further back, you have it again, another one, exactly the same. And this measurement here is two meters high, okay? And so what's happening is that I'm gonna draw this triangle here, okay? Um, you've got a sighting over here and you've got a sighting over there, okay? So, Let's see how we're gonna label this. So I'm gonna, like, that's a big dot and that's a big dot. Now, what do I know? It says the two sidings of the peak, a distance of 900 meters apart. So I know that this distance right here is 900 meters, okay? And it says the first observation results in an angle of 47 of elevation. So that means I'm looking upward. Um, and the second 35 degrees. Now I have to figure out which one, okay? Because it matters. Now, notice that when you're looking at this, you can't hardly tell, but the one that is further out has got a smaller angle here, okay? Now if I had drawn, drawn this further away, like way over here, you would see that it really gets smaller the further out you go, right? So the one to the right, the one furthest away from the sighting is gonna be the one with the smallest angle of elevation, okay? So this one is going to be the smaller of those two values. So this one's going to be 35 degrees and then this angle of elevation is going to be 47 degrees, okay? So that's all the information that they've given me. I've got my diagram and now I can go look at it. Now this is the triangle that I need to be solving. Okay. And actually, no, I need to know the height of this thing. So if I make the right triangle here, this height is really what I want to know. And then if I add add the two meters to it, I'll know how tall that mountain is, okay? Now again, my image is not to scale, so please bear with me, it is not to scale. <laughs> but I am going to use all of this information to figure out um, my um, angles and things like that, because this is all they give me and this is not quite enough. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is, what I wanna do is I wanna figure out H. And H is gonna come from this bigger right triangle. Okay. Now, I can use one of two things. I can either use this side and these, this side, which is kind of hard because I don't know what this measurement is, right? Or I can use this side and then this side to figure out um, H, okay? But I am gonna need to figure out the measurement of one of those, okay? I'm gonna either need to figure out this measurement so that I know the whole bottom, or I'm gonna need to figure out this measurement so that I know this entire length, okay? Um, so let's see, I think the easiest one to do would actually be to look at the gray triangle and figure out the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Because I know that all the way across this line should be 180 degrees. So 180 degrees minus 47 degrees is 133 degrees. And so then I know that this angle over here 
has to be whatever that is. I'm going to put theta plus 133 degrees plus 35 degrees has to equal 180 degrees. So then that angle up there needs to be 12 degrees. Okay, so I know all the angles in there and I already know a side. So if I go across, right, it has to be an angle and the side across to make one full pair. So I know that the sine of 12 degrees over over the opposite side, which is 900, is going to equal, and I'm trying to figure out this one, right? Remember, I'm looking at the shaded triangle. So I'm gonna try to do this angle with that side. Um, we'll just call it X. So this angle, sine of 133 degrees over X. And so then X equals 900 sine of 133 degrees over sine of 12 degrees. So X equals 3166. Six. I'm just going to do regular feet. It doesn't tell me what to round to, so I'm just going to say that many feet. Okay, so that's x, and that was found by using the law of sines for the grade shaded triangle. Okay, but we did have to use some geometry in order to find those angles. Okay, to be able to do that part. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the big pink triangle and we're going to try to figure out what H is. So I know now that this is 3166, not feet, meters. Everything is in meters. Okay. So if I look at the big triangle, I could use this angle, which is 35 degrees, and opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse is the sine function. So sine of 35 degrees equals H over the hypotenuse, which is 3166. This means if I multiply both sides by 3166, that this value equals H. So then H equals 3166 sine of 35, we get 1816 meters, okay? And guess what? That's H, but remember these things were already up at two meters. So what is the height of the mountain? The mountain is going to be, the height is going to be 1816 plus those two, which means 1818 meters high. Okay, so really, really have to put on our thinking caps with these things and figure out how we're going to get enough information to solve these triangles. Okay, and the easiest one is to figure out what the angles are. If you've got information about angles, you should be able to decipher it and figure out more angles. As long as you've got two angles in these figures, you should be able to figure out the angles of all the triangles. Like now that I know that, I know that these two have to be 90, right? So even if I was looking at this white triangle, 180 minus 90 minus 47 means that this one has to be 43 degrees. And if it is 43, what's 90 plus 43 plus 12 plus 35? Also 180 degrees, which is the pink one, right? It's the whole angle, the 43 and the 12, the 90 and the 35. So um, let's go ahead and move on to the very last, no, it's not the last, it's the next one. <laughs> so example seven says, um, Solve the applied problems, the ski lift problem. So it says, this one's really hard as far as being able to come up with the image. And it all, it 
it's because of these letterings that is the hint on how the drawing should look, okay? So it says, to find the length of the span of a proposed ski lift from P to Q, the survey measures DPQ to be 25 degrees. So here's the issue. You're up here at the top, and then there's one all the way over here at the ground, right? And this is the ground, okay? I don't know if I'm coming down the ski lift or if I'm going up the ski lift. All I know is that this is D, okay? And I don't know if P to Q is going in this direction or going in that direction, okay? But I do notice um, because I put this directly underneath it, okay? that this is a right angle here, okay? And so then what we need to figure out is what is 25 degrees? It says DPQ is 25 degrees. So if I label DPQ, then this is 15 degrees. Or I'm sorry, 25 degrees but I don't know which one is P, or I don't know if this is D, P, Q, and this one's 25 degrees. I don't know just yet. So let me finish reading. It says, and then walks off a distance of 100 feet to R. So then if he's walking, I'm guessing he's gotta be down here, right? So he walks 1,000 feet to R, so I know that this is R. So if I'm going from P to Q and then I'm walking R, so that means that this has to be P and this has to be Q so that I'm going P to Q and then walking some measurement for R. And it says P, Q, R, so P, Q, R is to be, or no, P, R, Q, which means I need to connect these two. So P, R, Q, the R is in the middle, so that's where the angle is gonna be, is 15 degrees. Now remember, D, P, Q, so this triangle, and P is in the middle, so it's this one that is 25 degrees. And it says, what is the distance from P to Q? So this is the unknown that they're asking me to find. Okay, now I do, I can figure out all of the angles, right? Um, it's very much possible. The first one I could figure out is this one because I made that a right triangle, right? So what is 90 degrees? What is um, 180 minus 90 minus 25? means that this angle is 65 degrees. And we already know that the whole line has to be 180. So 180 minus the 65 means that this measurement right here is 115 degrees. So then you have 180 minus 115 minus 15 means that this measurement is 50 degrees, okay? So we know all the angles, right? Um, and we know this side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this triangle here, I'm gonna gray it out, because we know all the angles and we know one of the side measurements, okay? So if I look at this, I am going to try to figure out that. So I need to use these two signs. So I can, these are opposite from each other, even though it looks like it's way over there. So I know sine of 50 degrees is over a thousand. Is it a thousand or a hundred? Yeah, a thousand. And then I want to know X. So I need the angle across from that. So that's sine of 15 degrees over X. And I can solve for X by doing cross multiplying over the leftover one. And so then I get X equals 
three, three, seven point eight, which means three, three, eight feet. And that's how long this measurement is. Okay. So the hardest part to me is drawing the figure and then filling in the information that you're given. Fortunately for you, fortunately, not unfortunately, but fortunately for you, your problems will have the pictures already. The only kinds of problems that won't have the triangles drawn are problems like this where they just tell you the angles, but it's just a regular triangle. But all of your word problems do have images already there, which is nice because it helps a lot to decide what's going on. And if you notice, I like to use colors to make things stand out to me. Um, and I like to do shading so I know what I'm focusing on, things like that. Sometimes I have to redraw the problem so that I can focus on whatever I need to be focusing on. Um, but especially with embedded triangles, it's very important that you get everything and the whole situation straightened out in your mind before you even try the problem. So let's go ahead and work on the last two examples we have in this section. So here we have John needs to determine the height of a tree before cutting it down to be sure that it will not fall on top of a nearby fence. The angle of elevation of a tree from one position on a flat path from the tree is 40 degrees. And from a second position, 20 degrees farther along, it, this path is 30 degrees. What is the height of the tree? So I'm gonna draw my little tree. There's my tree. And here he is. There's the top of the tree, the bottom of the tree, and that's the height, right? Now there was no um, transit value given, which means there's no like the height of a person or a height of a surveying machine to consider. It literally said that it was um, placed one position on a flat path from the tree. So if I go out, um, so I go out, I don't know how far I'm gonna go out because it didn't tell me, but this is the first sighting. And it tells me that that is going to be, angle of elevation is going to be 40 degrees. So whatever is taking this measurement has to like look up. And then 20 feet further out, we have the other sighting and that one has a 30 degree um, angle of elevation. And this is a right triangle. And so then I need to figure this out. Now, this is the triangle I need to consider because I don't have enough information to try to go for this one. I could figure out the angles of this one, but I don't know what any of the sides are of that big one. I don't know any of the sides. I know what part of the side is, but not the whole side of the pink one, okay? So that's why you're not gonna start with that because you're not given enough information. You have to be given at least three bits of information um, and at least one side, at least one side. I don't have any sides on this one, so I cannot figure it out, okay? I could figure out that this is 50, right? Because 90 plus 40 plus 50 will make 180 degrees for that um, white triangle that's in there. But the gray one, I need to figure that one out. Now I know already that across here is 180 for a flat line. So that means this angle has to be 140 degrees. And then I know that to make a gray triangle, it has to be 180. So I've got um, 30, that's 170, which means this would have to be 10 degrees. Um, and then looking at the pink one, that means that this is 60, here's 30, and then here's 90. And that also makes 180 degrees. So all of our angles are good to go and ready. Now, what do I need? I can't find this side. I don't have enough information to figure out what this side is either this little one or the big one. I don't have enough information. What I can do though, 
is I can look at this gray triangle and figure out what this side is, which happens to be the hypotenuse of the big pink one. And then I could use the hypotenuse and this side that I'm trying to find to solve for H. Okay, just kind of like we did in the last one. So I have this side and the angle across from it is 10 degrees. So I know that sine of 10 degrees over 20 is one of the ratios. Now I want to find this side, so I need the angle opposite of that to figure out what this is. Again, I'll just call it X. So then I'm gonna figure out that X is cross multiply over the extra one. So I get that X equals 20 sine of 140 over, uh, oh shoot, sine of 10. And I get 74. And this is in feet, yes, feet. So 74 feet. So now I know that this is 74 feet. Well, now that's enough information for me to look at the big pink triangle, this big one, and figure out what H is. Because I do have H at an angle across from it. So I have sine of 30 degrees over H equal to, and I have this side, and the angle across from it is 90 degrees. And so then if I solve for H, cross multiply 74 sine of 30 degrees over sine of 90 degrees, H equals 37 feet. So then that is my measurement for the height of this tree. This tree is 37 feet tall. Okay, um, now we have the last example. And this one says two fire stations are located half a mile apart. One mile is 5,280 feet at points A and B. So we've got one fire station at point A, another fire station at point B. Um, we've, I'm gonna finish this and put a C up there, but I don't know what C is. I don't know what these measurements are. So I don't know if C is like closer to this side or if it's closer to that side, I have no idea. So I just draw it in the middle and let the numbers speak for themselves, okay? So I do know that the two fire stations are 500, or five, 280 feet apart at point C, okay? And the angle measure ABC is 41 degrees. B is in the middle, which means that's the 41 degrees. A, B, C, so it's this angle. And the measure of CAB, so CAB, A is in the middle, so this measurement is 47 degrees, okay? Um, draw or sketch the scenario. I already did. I like to do it as I'm reading instead of just reading everything and then wondering what I read. Okay. Part two says, or part B says, justify how you will know without any computations that the fire station A is closer to than fire station B. How do we know? We have to use that idea that we've been using to verify whether or not our measurements made sense. And that is that the smaller angle will have a smaller measurement. The bigger angle will have a bigger measurement. So you've got 47 degrees and 41 degrees. This one's smaller, which means this measurement will be smaller. This one's bigger, which means this measurement will be bigger. So if there's more distance between B and the fire, and less distance between A and the fire, that is why station A is closer, okay? And what do we say? We just say the smaller angle will have the smaller or shorter opposite side.
Okay. And then part C says, use the law of sines to calculate to the nearest tenth how much closer fire station A is than fire station B. So since A is further away, um, actually since B is further away, because this one's the large one, right? And that one's the smaller one. This is side A, this is side B, and this is side C, right? According to our labeling convention. And this one's supposed to be bigger and that one's supposed to be smaller. So we basically need to figure out what is A minus B, okay? If we can figure out what A minus B is, then we will have um, the solution. So first let's find A, then let's find B, and then we can figure that distance. So I do have some information. I can figure out this measurement, right? 180 degrees equals A plus B plus C, which means C equals 180 minus 47 minus 41 is 92 degrees. So I know this is 92 degrees and I do have a side opposite of its angle. And that's all I need for law of sines. So sine of 92 degrees over 5280. And then do the same for A and B. So sine of 47 degrees over little a and sine of 41 degrees over little b. And I need to solve for both a and b. And I do have just one unknown in each of these fractions. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these two And then over here, I'm going to take these two. And so over here, I can solve for A, cross multiply. And so then I get A equal to something. We'll see in a second. Here, if I want to solve for B, I'm going to cross multiply. And so then I'm going to get B equal to something, but let's go see. 5280 sine 47 divided by sine of 92. We get um, 8 or 3864 feet. And then now let's go look at B. Everything's the same, it's just the measurement. So I'm going to change the 7 to a 1. And that's about three, four, six, six feet. So then how much closer is it? Let's do A minus B, which is three, eight, six, four minus three, four, six, six. And we get 398 feet closer. Okay, and that is the end of this section. So we are done for this problem, or this whole section. So that's the end.